If you've been on a weight loss journey for any period of time, at some point you are gonna hit the dreaded weight loss plateau. You've been stepping on that scale, it's been following your wishes, your desires, and it's been going down, and suddenly you notice that you feel like you're kind of staying at the same weight. It is not going down as expected. Does that mean you've come to the end? Should you just stop? In this video, I'm gonna give you the strategies, the mindset, the tactics to break through any weight loss plateau and get the results that you deserve. First, let me just say, if you are just getting started on your journey and you want to actually go back and track my progress, uh, I'm about 60 plus days into my own personal fitness and health transformation. You can go back and watch from the very beginning where I started at 202 pounds, now down, I'm approaching 20 pounds lost so far, and uh, I'll kind of share with you exactly what I'm actually doing. But let's talk about the plateau first. So it's going to happen. At some point, all of us are going to hit that plateau. It is a normal part of the process. When it happens, and again, it, it inevitably will, me telling you that doesn't make you feel much better. At best, you feel frustrated. At worst, you feel depressed. Understanding what's going on and how to win is a key part of this motivation, a key part of this process. Something that I actually found useful is actually looking at metrics other than the weight. Although my weight is one of the primary ones that I lean on, Sometimes you're actually still making forward progress even as your weight loss is stalling. So let me give you an example. You're saying, wow, I haven't lost any weight this week. Okay, let's compare where you are right now, your picture today, to your before picture when you started. I'll share mine with you right now. Wow, right? See how far we have actually come. There's nothing to be depressed about. So even in the worst case scenario where we're saying, all right, today is our day zero, wouldn't you rather start from here than when you first started? This is a mindset game. This is a long-term mindset. We weren't trying to get quick results. We were trying to get long-term lasting results. So take a little bit of pride in how much work you've already done. Now let's get you know nitty gritty here and talk about tactics to break through a plateau. First, we need to identify what it is that we're actually experiencing. Is this truly a plateau? And what I mean by that is you're following the protocol, you're sticking with the plan, you're playing by all the rules and the weight loss is slowing down or in reality, You've been slowly getting a little bit casual. You've been kind of breaking a few of the rules. You know, they were about 30, 40, 50, 60 days in. We got an invitation to go out over the weekend and we just kind of loosened up. We had some pizza, we had a, a drink, you know, or drinks. And so in reality, and even though you tried to reel it in and you didn't do too bad, you didn't go into a full on snowball, you know that this week and honestly last week too, you weren't operating at peak capacity happens to all of us. It happened to me. Actually, that's my story. So I'm 50 to 60 days in. Look at this weight loss trend. Now look at the last week. It just stalled, right? I knew though that this one would happen and two, I can identify what was going on in the background that makes me okay with it. So one, we went over to a friend's house. They made some homemade pizza. I was very much in the right mindset. I tried to reel it in. I only had two pieces and I didn't have any dessert. I didn't have any alcohol, kept it to seltzer water, but then it was our anniversary over the weekend. We did a staycation. We had some wine. We went to a Chinese restaurant, had a larger than normal meal size. And I was not surprised to know that that week, my weight loss basically flatlined but I did so good on all the other days. Why would that happen? It's because our body has a metabolic pathway to store that, that those carbohydrates for energy, for quick access energy later on. It's called glycogenesis. Now, what's important to know about this is when your body converts a carbohydrate into glycogen, the glycogen also draws in a lot of water to surround that cell. So what that means for you practically is, let's say your body stores you know, one pound of carbohydrates now being stored in the form of glycogen, it also draws in right along with that almost a three to four ratio of water. So that one pound of stored energy that you're holding on to, your body is also storing three to four pounds of water. So you're like, man, I didn't even feel like I eat that much. It was, you know, it was a little dense, but, but it wasn't that bad. And now you're five pounds heavier. It makes sense. The good news is, that because you kept that snowball to such a tight window, although you have stored glycogen, this is a very temporary status, and you did not actually add any fat on, which is why if you have a picture log, it's very useful. Having said that, if you, you do descend into snowball madness where you give up on the rules and you say, oh, I gained five pounds, I've already lost all my progress, and then from there, you keep eating more and more, as soon as you filled up those glycogen cells, 
That path, you can't build glycogen forever. Your body has a limited capacity to do that. So it has other mechanisms to take additional carbohydrates and actually turn that into fat. And that is called lipogenesis. And that is the death knell to the progress on your diet. So if we can understand this pathway and say, well, it's not ideal that I'm storing all this glycogen, I'm carrying this extra water weight, at least I nipped it in the bud and I didn't start adding fat as well, you can be confident that this is a temporary stall. It is not a long-term setback. Now, that, that's one. That's when we know that we kind of screwed up. And it's just to say, you know, it's going to take you probably about a week to get rid of all the glycogen, to flush all the water weight. But it's going to be shocking how quick that goes. And then from there, you'll be back to wherever you were on Thursday. And now you're making forward progress again. And maybe your body even needed just a kind of a slowdown just to give it some energy balance. There might even be some benefits. You could think of this as a refeed day. Don't even think about it as a cheat day. You didn't give in. You didn't snowball. You just had a little bit more food. You gave your body a chance to reset. And now you're moving forward. And did it cost you a week? Sure. But we have the rest of our lives. You know, this was never about the short term. This is always about, we want to be in this level of shape next year and the year after and the year after. And anniversaries happen, birthdays happen. You just want to stay in control of it and you want to make sure you don't go to that next phase where you're actually adding fat back on. I hope that's helpful. Now, let's actually talk about the other scenario. You legitimately are doing everything right, at least in your mind, and the weight just seems to be slowing. What can you do? I want to give you nine strategies, nine tips, which are guaranteed, guaranteed to break you through that plateau. And I know that I can guarantee them because it's exactly what I do. It's my mentality. It's what I did to break through this plateau. And it's what I'll use in the future as well. Number one is we need to check and eliminate grazing. What do I mean by that? I did a video called The Laws of Lean. In that episode, I actually outlined the rules that I'm following to lose this weight. When you're 40 or 50 days in, that video was watched or done a long time ago, right? And so in your mind, although you think you're being strict, you may not be as hardline as you think you are. So, you know, if we're not following the rules about time restricting, if we're not cutting out all the processed foods, if we slowly added certain comfort foods in, it might be time just to take a hard look at that and be honest with ourselves. Are we being as good as we really think we are? Are you occasionally having the beer or the alcoholic beverage? Could it be that that's slowing you down? Do you find yourself occasionally having the processed foods at night? You know, this is a small margin game each and every day. And if we're blowing it up by bringing in a bunch of junk into our life, we might be undoing our progress each and every day or each and every week. It's very easy to undo a week's worth of work with just one or two bad days. So that's something to keep in mind. Number one is just let's check ourselves to our baseline. Number two, and this is one that I found myself going to a little bit more, I've started increasing my cardio. So in the past, for the first 30 or 40 days, and keep in mind, I was significantly heavier, 20 pounds, it was just walking, you know, 30 minutes a day, going on a walk with a family, maybe doing 30 minutes on a bike or a row machine, whatever else. But I kind of gave myself a lot of outs. It wasn't particularly difficult. Now I'm actually finding myself four or five days a week increasing that to an hour a day. And it is, I'm always sweating at the end of that hour. And one of the things is this is not as hard as it was when I first started. When I first started, my energy levels were a lot lower. My weight was a lot higher. Now I feel like I actually have the energy or the momentum to do an hour of cardio. And so what I do just to mix it up, I do 30 minutes on a row machine. And then I do 30 minutes on a bicycle. You could do a million variations of this. You could do a game of pickup basketball. Maybe when social distancing is kind of toned down a little bit, you could play some tennis, your sport of choice, but you should be targeting about an hour and an hour of something that makes you sweat at the end of this. We want to try to get our heart rate up. You know, imagine if you had the heart rate monitor, you're at the gym, something that you could put your hands on. We'd like to, our heart rate to be floating somewhere in between 80 to 120 and kind of stay there for about a period of an hour. Now, you don't need to go out and buy a heart rate monitor. A quick indicator if you've hit this metric is just that at the end of the hour or maybe even going into 30 minutes and then all the way through the hour, you're starting to sweat. That tells you that you're probably in the right zone. Shouldn't be too hard if you're doing this in the middle of the summer, particularly in Virginia. Number three is actually goes more to the optimization side. So all of these will be focused on either you know, working out more, eating less, or optimization. This focuses more on optimization. The macros that you eat are particularly important. So we talked about cutting out processed carbohydrates. I'm going to talk now a little bit about carbohydrate timing specifically. Assuming that you've already cut out processed sugars from your diet, that will leave you with some really good carbs that you do consume on a regular basis. For me, it looks like oatmeal, sweet potato, rice, things like that. As I get farther on this path, I find myself cutting out more and more processed breads as well. 
and sticking more with the rice, oatmeal, sweet potatoes, that sort of thing. And when I have those carbohydrates, I find myself tapering more of them towards earlier in the day. I find myself still having pasta around once a week or so, so this is not an absolute dogmatic thing, but traditionally, I'm trying to get my carbohydrate sources earlier on in the day, and if I'm having pasta, you know, some sort of chicken casserole or pasta dish, I'm limiting that to maybe once or twice a week on the high end. Another macro to think about is protein. I'm, I'm lumping all these together on optimizing your macros, protein. Protein, you wanna keep your protein levels higher. Protein has a nice function of actually keeping you fuller, preserving your muscle mass. You know, it's great to lose 20 pounds, but if all, if 10 or 12 or 13 of those pounds are muscle, you're not gonna like the result of that. We wanna keep as much of that fat as possible and preserve as much muscle as possible. Having a little bit of protein with each meal, with each meal will make sure this happens. The last one is fat. Now fats, I, I've told you in the laws of lean, I'm a huge fan of, I don't get scared of, I regularly have heavy cream and meals as an ingredient, it's not a problem. Having said that, if you find yourself going to quote unquote healthy snacks and one of your healthy snacks is peanut butter and you're eating it by the tablespoon, you need to be aware that fat is very calorically dense. And if you're not really kind of paying attention to how much you're eating, you could blow through any sort of calorie goals for yourself without even knowing it. So a better option there instead of eating peanut butter would maybe be to have the whole version like peanuts or even better choice almonds or walnuts. Uh, they take a little bit more work to consume. You, they're not quite as unlimited Moorish where you're just going to keep eating them forever and they will give you a better source of those same calories without kind of craving more afterwards. Also, a lot of peanut butters on the market are loaded with sugar. So if you are eating peanut butter or that sort of thing, make sure you're getting one that's relatively unprocessed, doesn't have sugar as an added ingredient. All right, number four. So a lot of this, a lot of this is actually outside of our control. And two, two factors that I'm going to talk about. Number four is managing stress. And specifically, stress is related to a hormone called cortisol. And both men and women have cortisol. Women, their cortisol levels fluctuate by time of the month. And they're more susceptible to these swings than other. If that's the case, it's going to be outside of your control. The key here is that you don't get depressed when you hit a plateau, but recognize it might be just a hormonal swing and just... Follow the rest of these rules and get through it without getting discouraged. If you have a long-term mindset and you have these picture log to show you making progress, even when the scale doesn't always do what you want, you'll be more likely to stay the course. The other thing you can do, both men and women, that actually can have an effect on your cortisol level, and this is point number five, is sleep. Listen, sleep is a critical factor. And while absolutely you could just get two hours or three hours, four hours of sleep a day, there is a price to be paid for that long-term. Sleep is a process that your body uses to restore itself, to build some of these hormones, and there's a price to be paid, toxins that build up when you are not sleeping, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day. That's kind of the threshold that you want to be in. Now, for number six, I want to talk about eating less, but in a very strategic way. This one might seem a little bit more extreme to some of you, and it's definitely optional. I don't think you need to do all of these. You should just kind of go through them and see what works for you. We've in the past talked about time-restricted eating. In Laws of Lean, I, I shared how I stop eating after 6 p.m. So I eat between 10 and, or 9 and 6, and I go the rest of the time without any food, and I'm extending my fast while I sleep. If you've done this for any period of time, you realize that you actually don't mind it. You've actually been able to condition yourself and get used to it, and the idea that I'm about to share with you might not seem so extreme. Have you ever considered doing a 24-hour fast? Now, extended long-term fast, 15, 16 days, 18 days that people do can be devastating for your muscle. I mean, you will just lose ridiculous amounts of muscle. But our bodies evolved from a hunter-gatherer society where there, it would be very common for us to go a day without eating. And so as a trial, what I, what I actually personally am starting to do now going forward is implement a one day a week, 24-hour fast. There's some strategies for success around this, but basically the goal here is to be able to eat basically a normal caloric load, not decrease my calories significantly on any other day, but by making this one change here, having one quote unquote hard day, I am automatically creating for myself a 2000 calorie plus deficit a week. And over time doing that week after week, it almost ensures every single week that I hit my goals. There's a few strategies for success when you actually do this. So I pick a very, I'm very intentional about the day that I choose. I pick a day where I'm mostly locked in front of the computer. I have a lot going on, but it's not something that requires a heavy caloric burden. I need to be mentally acute, but I don't need to be doing a whole lot physical. I don't plan any very strict workouts. Occasionally I will still do cardio on the fasting day, but I don't lift heavy weights on this day. 
and I optimize some of those other things around it. So I drink plenty of fluids. And this was actually one of the points that I was going to talk about, drink more fluids. We'll talk about that in a second. But I certainly try to drink plenty of fluids on my fast day. I limit those to calorie-free fluids. So I will do water throughout the day. I will time my caffeine intake. So I'll have a black coffee around 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. In the afternoon, I'll either have a second cup of black coffee or I will have an energy drink, like something zero calorie, but a monster with some sort of flavor. There's, there's a bunch to choose from. But, you know, something that you can look forward to. And then in the evening, I'll be drinking decaf tea. Now, that's a long day without food. And so I typically will find myself wanting to cut the day a little bit short and go to bed a little bit earlier. And I just try not to do as much. It's a day that's kind of like a decompressed day. And I've gotten to the point now where I actually kind of look forward to it. And it is a phenomenal force multiplier that allows you to have the other six days a week eating basically what you were doing before. And this one day a week where you have this big deficit and... It's weird, and in some ways, if you can do, if you can go one day without eating, it's amazing how your desire to snack the other days completely goes away because you're anchored to the idea, wow, I made it 24 hours without eating. Well, of course, I don't need to snack in between meals on the other days. So it's been a form of stoicism that's helped helped me build my mental fortitude, but I certainly rely on strategies for success to be able to pull it off successfully. Number seven, and we talked about this, was increased water consumption. My goal is to drink around a gallon of fluid a day. Everything is easier when you're increasing your water consumption. For me, I actually measure out one gallon in a gallon jug, and then I pour that into my Nalgene one liter bottle, and I fill that up three or four times a day. If I'm working out, I'll try to actually drink the gallon of jug, the gallon of water while I'm working out. That's super helpful. Uh, number eight is caffeine optimization. Listen, I don't talk about a whole lot of supplements. I really don't do supplements. My supplements are kind of limited to, I drink black coffee or caffeine. I drink caffeinated tea or decaffeinated tea. Occasionally I'll have an energy drink and I'll throw that in the middle of the day just to break it up. But my intervals for the caffeine injections are around 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Those are my two spots for caffeine intake. You know, 10 a.m. could have some flex in it, but that too is pretty locked because that gets me through dinner. After dinner, things are slowing down. I don't need caffeine anymore. And so that's really my primary supplement. The other two that I would take is potentially occasionally a multivitamin. I'm not dogmatic about it. I don't do it every day. But if I'm starting to feel run down or worried that I'm not getting enough nutrients, I will have one. And then I have I have protein shakes periodically, maybe three or four servings per week. Don't need to have it every day, but that's it. If you're going to ask, I could do a whole episode on supplements, but it'd be a very short video. Here they are. And number nine is increased activity. Look, once you have made it to your first weight loss plateau, you need to realize you probably have more energy than when you started. You know, in my case, I've lost just about 20 pounds right now. Imagine having a 10 pound block of fat in your hand, how big that is. Now double it. That's what 20 pounds looks like. Do you realize how easy it is to go through your day when you're not carrying around 10 pounds of fat, 20 pounds of fat, 40 pounds of fat, how much more energy you have? So lean into that. Take advantage. When your friends ask you if you want to play a sport, say yes. You know, look for opportunities to be more active. This is your privilege and it's your momentum actually working for you. It's a fantastic way to break through the plateaus, become the more active person that you wanted to be at the start of this. And we're not at the finish line, but we're also not at day zero. Just recognize you have made progress. You are so much better off now than you were when you started. Don't give up. Keep going. Understand where you might be breaking the rules and learn how to get yourself back in line with what your goals are. And you've got this. I'm going to do a video updating you. But just so you know, with the challenge I set with myself to lose 10% body weight over a period of six months, I'm about 70 days in and I, I hit my goal. And just so you know, I set a bet with myself on healthy wage and I am going to, I'm going to win over $1,300. I'm going to net over a thousand dollars on that bet. And it's easy. I knew I was going to take healthy wages money and you can too. So if you're interested in making a bet with yourself, locking it in, you know, you've got this, just go to chooseify.com slash healthy wage. And the link is in the description below. Otherwise, check out the playlist. I'm telling you, if you want to guarantee that six months from now, you're going to look back at yourself and say, wow, I'm a different human being, then just go through this playlist and implement the ideas included. I walk you through it and we're just getting started. I'm going to keep doing this until we get to 10% body fat and you can do this with me. I, I know myself. There's nothing special going on here. I'm just following the plan. Check out the playlist right here and we'll see you next week.